We're finishing our talk on anemias with our last category of anemia, and that is macrocytic anemia. So macrocytic anemias are anemias that have MCV over 100. So MCV over 100. Why are they so big? They're big for two reasons. One of them is there's a problem with DNA synthesis. And then the other reason is there's not a problem with DNA synthesis, so non-DNA problem. That's kind of the catch-all, I guess you can say. Uh, problems with DNA synthesis, you can have you can have folate deficiency that's needed to make uh, pyrimidines. So folate deficiencies or drugs that cause folate deficiencies, like methotrexate. So I'll just write drugs. B12, which is needed to replenish folate, and then you have something called oritic aciduria. And if you can't synthesize DNA for whatever reason, then your cell is stuck in the G phase, the growth phase. That's what the G stands for. And it can't undergo mitosis or go to the next stage because it needs DNA. So it's stuck in that growth phase and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And that's why you get large cells. And those cells also can't mature because it can't undergo mitosis. So you see a lot of blasts. Recall we said blasts are just immature cells. And so you see a little, a lot of large blasts. And so the name we give this is, meg, is macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. Macrocytic megaloblastic large blast anemia. And it's due to this. Another classical finding is you're going to see neutrophils that are hypersegmented. Hypersegmented. Hopefully you remember what that means. That means neutrophils with more than five lobes. So you can see a whole bunch of lobes. Why you see those? Um, there's still a lot of different theories about why that is. But whatever the reason, you see hypersegmented neutrophils. And that is very, very classic. And again, anytime you have a very, very classic image, then they can just show you a hypersegmented uh, neutrophil, and then you have to fill in the blank. And then you're thinking of these three things. So that's problems with DNA synthesis. What causes macrocytic anemias that are non-DNA related? Well, you can have alcoholism. That's just a, a direct toxin. Uh, we said that micro, we said that alcoholism can cause macrocytic anemias. Um, how do you differentiate the two? Well, just look at the MCV. Is it macrocytic or is it macrocytic? So alcoholism can cause it. Hypothyroidism and um, liver disease can cause it. This is due to cholesterol and phospholipid deposition into the cell and causes it to grow larger. You can also have diamond black fan, which I think is a really cool name. Diamond black fan. And diamond black fan is a problem with the progenitor cells. And they just grow a little larger. So that's what gives you the macrocytic anemia. They grow larger and they don't, they don't grow enough. That's what gives you the anemia. The most characteristic thing about diamond black fan, well, first is seen in kids. So that's already a dead giveaway. But one of the most characteristic things is they have triphalangeal thumbs really long thumbs. So their thumbs basically look like five identical fingers. They kind of look like this. So triphalangeal thumbs. About 50% of these patients have these triphalangeal thumbs. You need to know that. So that is your non-DNA causes. Nice and quick, simple. Back to your DNA causes. We said folate B12. Um, I'm not gonna harp too much on it. I went in depth in my biochem video. I'll link it in the description, so just make sure you check it out. But just to recap on the lab findings, I think that's the more important part. In the lab findings, they both have elevated homocysteine. However, only B12 has elevated methyl, methyl malonic acid. That's the dead giveaway. Um, how do you treat it? Give full air B12. Let's say a patient comes in with macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, so it's only three, and you give full and B12 and the patient doesn't get better. Well, by default, what do you think it is? Maybe aortic aciduria. And this is a enzyme deficiency, so it's probably seen more in kids, so it'd be a kid patient that has the type of anemia. 
And um, in your pathway, in your synthesis of pyrimidines, you have something called auric acid, and that becomes uridine monophosphate or UMP via the enzyme UMP synthase. If you have a deficiency in this enzyme, then your auritic acid can't move on the pathway. And it'll start to build up. And not only that, you're going to have problems with your DNA synthesis, and that's what causes anemia. But auritic acid itself is pretty toxic. And that'll start to build up and build up and build up. And how you diagnose it is by looking at this in the urine. Okay? Now there's another enzyme deficiency that causes an increase in auritic acid, and that's a deficiency in the enzyme ornithine transcarboxylase. And ornithine transcarboxylase is found in the urea cycle. And because it's found in the urea cycle, you're also going to have increased ammonia levels, which is not seen in auritic acid urea. So that's a dead giveaway. How do you treat this? Well, you just give them UMP. You just kind of bypass the roadblock. And that is your macrocytic anemias. Nice short video. Hope you enjoyed it. That does it for your anemias. See you next time.